Hello, I'm Larry McKinnon, and welcome to another episode of Spotlight, where we put the focus on a topic and issue and provide insight for your safety and well-being. Today, my guest is Glenda Smith of Equestrian Horse Rescue in Carrollwood. Glenda, thank you for coming today. I know over the last couple of months, um, even into the last year, we've had um, you know one horse starving is way too many, but we've seen to seen um, several of them uh, in the last couple of months and. I know the economy's tight, you know, people are um, having to make choices between feeding their kids or feeding their horses. What are some of the options that people have before they even get them to the point where um, you know, they become so emaciated that they end up having to either uh, be put down or, or spend thousands of dollars on, on rehabilitating them? Well, your options are when your horse is, uh, starts to miss meals and you don't have the money to, to go and buy them hay and grain to reach out to a rescue and we're there to help. A lot of times we're full, but we work with other rescues as well to try and get these horses in or at least provide feed and hay for them and get them on our waiting list statewide so that when a place opens up, we can put them there. So you have not only your rescue, but you have a network of rescues throughout the community that um, if, if you're full, you can either refer them to the other rescues is that, is that how that works? Absolutely, and we can get hay and grain out to these horses so that they are maintained until they have a safe place to so go. So they can actually keep them at, their, at the place yes. where they, okay, that's mm -hmm. good. Now, I know we had talked about um, foster care, you know, some of the people that, that are out there that, that may have horses that want to participate in, in helping the rescue, um, and, and because of a lot of times these horses are are, are oftentimes abandoned on other people's properties, yes. uh, you'll get an overload. Um, you'll have people come in and say, give me the horse for a couple of weeks until you can find a place. How does that work? Well, several of our colleagues have foster barns that we are actually using right now because we're full. Mm -hmm. So we have four fostered out in training. And the idea is to move these horses along so that they can be retrained and adopted and that opens up spots for the other horses. So we want to encourage people, horse people in the community to open their properties and their barns and take these horses in for a few weeks until we can, you know, make a place at either our place or at another facility. And if everybody would cooperate, because resources are limited, everybody needs help, including the rescues, us in particular, but if they'll do this, then we can really make a difference. And, and that's a good point, too, because a lot of people they may not have a, a barn or a place or a field to put their horse, but simply going out, if, the, if you're a horse lover, and in reality, who isn't, um, yes. uh, and, and you see these type of things that are ongoing and, and you know that there's horses out there that are not getting, uh, getting the food that they need, just go buy a feed store, bag, buy a bag of feed and drop it off, or, mm -hmm. or hay or some cash donations, that really helps. I know it helps law enforcement uh, because a lot of times we'll get calls where horses are abandoned, like I had said before, in, in fields, and we don't know who they belong to. And oftentimes, it's better for us to give them to a rescue uh, because they're, we know they're going to get a 24-hour day care as opposed to us having to put them in a field and just check on them periodically. So we also encourage the, the public to get involved and, and provide assistance to, to a lot of these rescues uh, so that they'll have a safe place to go. Um, well, is there a number that somebody can call if they want to make any type of donations or if there's, um, you know, they want to come by and, and even help clean out stalls or volunteer? What, what can Absolutely. they do? Absolutely. They can contact us at, at equestrianinc.org and the phone number is area code 813-407-6805 and they may send checks um, to 4902 Timberland and that's Tampa 33624 or they, we do have a PayPal set up on our website so they can make a donation there. And we really want to concentrate on building bridges with the Sheriff's Department and the people in the community so that everybody helps everyone else. Often our hands are tied without either our, our organization or the Sheriff's Department. So if we all work together, we can get this job done. Well, thank you. I tell you, that's what's message is here today. If you can't feed your horse, he starts missing a meal. Um, don't wait till he's he's emaciated and he's got ribs exposed. Um, reach out, pick up that phone, and call somebody. You know the sheriff's office does not want to go out and make a criminal investigation into 
animal abuse, we want to make sure that the horse is fed. And if you just can't do it, pick up that phone, call Glenda or call your local rescue and, um, and we'll get some help for you. Absolutely. Well, Glenda, thank you so much for joining us today. It's we hope my that we'll uh, continue working together and, we and will. making sure that the horses out there stay healthy and happy. Absolutely. Thank you very much. I'm Larry McKinnon and we'll see you next time.